In this video, we are going to talk about the concept of the half-life. The definition of the half-life is the time that it takes for the concentration of a reactant to be reduced to one half of its initial concentration. There are a lot of applications of, of half-life, but probably the most um, common is in the study of radioactive particles. Scientists can determine how much of a radioactive particle is left um, after some time if they know the half-life. So this is useful in things like carbon dating and a lot of uh, other aspects of uh, radiochemistry and uh, pharmacology as well. The time that it takes to reduce the concentration by half is uh, dependent on the order, the overall order of a reaction. So we have, in this case, three different uh, half-life equations. If it is an overall first order reaction, then the half-life is equal to a constant 0.693 divided by the rate constant K. If the reaction is second order overall, then the half-life is equal to one over the initial concentration times the rate constant for that reaction. Again, the rate constant is specific for a particular reaction. And if it is zero order overall, then the half-life is equal to the initial concentration divided by two times the rate constant. So let's briefly look at each of these um, half-life equations in just a bit more detail and point out a couple of um, important uh, facts about each of these. So if the Reaction is first order overall. As we mentioned, the equation is T1 half is equal to 0.693 divided by the rate constant. You notice that in this equation, there is no concentration, no initial concentration. So therefore, for a first order reaction, the half-life is independent of the initial concentration. So therefore, each half-life is a constant value, a constant time. Take a minute and examine the, the graph we have over here. If we start at an initial concentration of 0.2, the time it takes to reduce that concentration or for that concentration to um, decay to 0.1 molar is the half-life. In this case, the half-life looks to be about seven seconds. So the time it takes, so the half-life would be seven seconds. And for the second half-life, the time it takes to get from uh, 0.1 molar to 0.05, that, that time would also be <clears throat> seven seconds. The third half-life is the time that it takes to reduce from uh, 0.05 to 0.025. And that, ha that time, that half-life would be, again, seven seconds. So here we have a, a graph showing you the first three half-lives for this first order reaction. Right. Let's take a look at a graph and some information about a, a half-life for a second order overall reaction. Okay. The equation half-life is equal to 1 over the initial concentration times K. So the half-life does depend on the concentration. Now because we have an inverse here, as the concentration gets smaller, the half-life gets longer. So for a second order reaction, the half-life is dependent on the initial concentration. It's also, of course, dependent on the rate constant. Uh, and as the concentration gets lower, the half-life gets longer. It gets twice what it was previously. So let's look at this briefly. If we start at uh, initial concentration of 0.2 and we reduce that to 0.1, the time it takes there uh, looks like about, what would that be, 10, 20, about 25 seconds maybe, 10, 20, 30, 40, oh, that'd be 20, 40, 60, 80, so that would be 20, 40, about 50 seconds it looks like. So the first half-life would be about 50 seconds. The second half-life would be the time it takes to get from 0.1 molar down to 0.05. And so that should be, if the first half-life was 50 seconds, the second half-life should be about 100 seconds. And so here we have a 20, 40, 60, 80, about 100 seconds. So again, it should double uh, as the, the length of the half-life should increase uh, as the concentration decreases. And that's a hallmark of a, a second-order uh, reaction.
Okay, let's take a look finally at the um, half-life equation for a zero-order reaction. Okay, again, as we mentioned, <clears throat> the half-life depends on the initial concentration, and that's divided by 2 times the rate constant. You notice that if we plot concentration versus time, we get a straight line. Now that's, again, a hallmark of a zero-order reaction. Uh, the half-life, here we're getting from going from 0.2 to 0.1 molar, and so that takes a certain amount of time. The second half-life, we go from 0.1 to 0.05 molar, the half-life gets shorter, and then for the third half-life it gets shorter. So for a zero-order reaction, as the concentration, as your initial concentration decreases, the half-life decreases as well. So be aware of these um, uh, relationships between concentration, the length of the half-life, and uh, the order of the overall reaction. Let's take a look at a sample problem dealing with half-lifes to give us uh, some idea of uh, how, how we can apply these to solve some problems. The question says, uh, it, the first order reaction where CH3NC <clears throat> is converted to CH3CN uh, this reaction has a rate constant of 6.3 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds to the minus 1 at a temperature of 230 Celsius. What is the half-life for this reaction? Uh, how much of a 10 gram sample of our reactant will remain after five half-lives? How many seconds would be required for 75% of the CH3NC sample to decompose? So pause this video and, and uh, See if you can solve these problems, and then play it again and follow along and see how you did. Okay, so let's take a look at the first part. In the first part of this, now we're told that this is a first order reaction, so we know which half life equation we want to use. <clears throat> we're also given the rate constant. So this one's pretty simple. For a first order reaction, we just take our constant, 0.693 divide it by our rate constant, which is given, and we should get, again, watch your units. Here we have seconds to the minus 1, so our units will be seconds, and we should get um, 1,100 seconds. That's how long it takes for the concentration to be reduced by half. Okay, let's take a look at part B. How much of a 10-gram sample of CH3NC will remain after five half-lives? Well, after the first half, we're, we're we're reduced by half, and then that concentration is reduced by half again, and then by half again, and half again, and half again, etc. Five times, that's five half-lives. So if we multiply those together, we would get one thirty-second. In other words, after five half-lives, we should have one thirty-second of our initial sample remaining. So I would just take my 10 grams times one thirty-second, or divide it by 32, and I would find that I have 0.313 grams of my sample remaining. Okay, and finally, how many seconds would be required for 75% of our reactant to decompose? Well, 75% for that to decompose, that's two half-lives. Remember, after the first half-life, you have 50% left. After the second half-life, that 50% has been reduced in half, which means that you have 50 and then 25, which gives you an overall 75% reduction after two half-lives. So from part A, we know that one half-life takes 1,100 seconds, so two half-lives would be 2,200 seconds, and that's how long it would take for 75% to decompose.